Should I go ahead and ask you a question? Sure, anything. Okay. Um, we're led to think that anarchism is bomb throwing mayhem. What is what is it that attracts you to anarchism? Uh, anarchism has nothing to do with bomb throwing mayhem. It's uh, anarchism is a point of view which, uh, first of all, it covers a lot of things. You know, political rhetoric is not the clearest, uh, it's not a model of clarity. And anarchism has covered quite a lot of ground. But the mainstream of it uh, has just been the basic principle, which I think comes straight out of classical liberalism and the Enlightenment, that uh, uh, any form of authority and domination uh, has, a, has a burden of proof to bear. It has to demonstrate that it's legitimate no matter what it is, whether it's inside a family or uh, you know, in the global economy. <coughs> if, <it's coughs> if it is a form of authority and domination and coercion, <coughs> it has to show that it's legitimate. If it can demonstrate it's legitimate, and it's a heavy burden to bear. If it shows that it's legitimate, okay. If not, it ought to be dismantled. That's anarchism. Okay, now what is considered legitimate authority? That's the, it's the task of those who have the authority to demonstrate that. So, for example, if I'm taking a walk with my granddaughter, and she, oops, okay, and she uh, suppose I'm taking a walk with my granddaughter, and she runs across, runs out into the street, okay, and I grab her and pull her back. Well, that's authority, uh, and it's my task to demonstrate that it's legitimate. And I think in this case, if anybody challenged me, I could make an argument saying that's legitimate authority. Uh, but the burden of proof is always on those who exercise it. Uh, that's true if it's uh, men and women, parents and children, uh, owners and people they rent, uh, the state and people who serve it, uh, the IMF and people who follow its orders, uh, wherever it is. So there's no general definition of what legitimate authority is. It's the task of those who exercise authority to demonstrate their legitimacy. They're the ones who have the burden of proof. And if they can't meet that burden, by explaining why what they do is legitimate, then they have no right to exercise the authority. And whatever institution, w any institution within which they exercise, it is illegitimate unless they show otherwise. Uh, and the anarchists are just people who believe that and try to do something about it. So the members of that institution, is it their responsibility to, uh, to, to make a judgment call about the authority of the the person who is trying to prove their legitimate authority? Well, I don't, I don't mean that every minute of the day everybody has to be saying, look, this is my legitimate authority, but they have to be prepared to meet the challenge. Sure. And so, so if it's like a, demo, suppose it's a formally democratic state. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, in principle, that challenge is met by uh, interchange among the population, mm -hmm. which recognizes the authority of, the, of actions in the public arena through constant interaction, debate, struggle, and so on. In theory, that's what happens if it is a democratic state. Uh, to the extent that that doesn't happen, it's not a democratic state and it is illegitimate. Uh, when you move to other systems of authority, like say private corporations or fascist states or uh, other forms of totalitarianism, uh, there's no question of legitimacy because they have none. So, but it's the responsibility of the other people in, the, in that institution, whatever that institution might be, to question and to challenge. No, it's not their responsibility. It's their responsibility to meet the challenge. It's the responsibility of people to make the challenge. So it's the responsibility of, uh, say, women to challenge uh, a framework in which they are supposed to wash the dishes and put the children to sleep and that sort of thing. Uh, and it's the responsibility of men in a patri traditional patriarchic family to an answer that challenge. Uh, I mean, it would be nice if you could, if the challenge could be raised by those in positions of authority, but that's pretty rare. I mean, usually when you're in a position of authority, you kind of internalize the values that say it's right and just. And the reason is because, I think, because most people are sort of decent human beings, and it's very hard to tell your, to look in the mirror and say, I'm a bastard. Uh, so usually what you do is look in the mirror and say, I'm a nice guy, uh, and I do these things because it's right and just and <coughs> legitimate. Uh, and that's pretty standard, you know. I mean, everybody knows that from their own experience. We don't have to go into it. That's what people are like. Uh, and therefore, the responsibility of uh, raising the challenge is typically in the hands of those who 
recognize that they have a subordinate status. It's very hard to recognize that. I mean, people live, you know, for e millennia, you know, without recognizing that they are being subordinated in systems of power. I mean, that's true of uh, women, for example. It's it's in or slaves, you know. I mean, most slave societies were accepted by the slaves as legitimate and, in fact, necessary. Uh, and and uh, uh, a large part, and, and the same is true of, uh, for example, people who have jobs today in our society. Uh, almost without exception, they consider it legitimate for them to be in a position where they have to rent themselves in order to survive. That's not, certainly not obvious, you know. Uh, and in fact, if you go back a century ago, uh, it was not only considered not obvious, it was considered outlandish by, or by a work, marrying working people. Uh, I'm not talking about Marxists or socialists or anybody like that, but say uh, mill hands in <coughs> Lowell, Massachusetts, who never heard of socialism, uh, who regarded it as a form of slavery and were complaining that uh, they uh, had not fought the Civil War to <coughs> replace chattel slavery by wage slavery, uh, and that therefore those who work in the mills ought to own them. Uh, because that's the Republican rights that we won in the American Revolution and so on and so forth. So, you know, it's not obvious. But by now, I think enough indoctrination and propaganda and so on has taken place so people do regard that form of subordination to external authority as legitimate. Whether they should is another question, but the fact is they do, just as for most of history, women have accepted a subordinate role as correct and proper and so on, uh, and slaves did, and people living in, say, uh, feudal societies. In a feudal society, people had a place, you know, uh, some kind of role, and quite typically the societies were stable because people regarded those structures as legitimate. Uh, the same is true of religious structures and uh, uh, I mean, throughout human life, there's a whole variety of systems of authority and oppression and domination and so on, which are usually accepted as legitimate by the people subordinated to them. When they don't, you have struggles and revolutions and sometimes changes and sometimes brutality and so on. Uh, that's, uh, I, as far as I understand it, anarchists are just people who take this seriously. <laughs>